Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting, as you can see, with this new post of Flex Wheeler, this very weird post that's got a lot of people worried about Flex Wheeler. So he posted this video of himself pumping up backstage back when he was competing, and what is weird about it is the caption. The caption says, time to say goodbye to the dreamer. What the hell does this mean? You guys know that Flex hasn't really been healthy, well, for a long, long time. Even back when he was competing, he realized he had some kidney issues, and a couple of years ago, he lost a big part of his leg. It seemed like he was actually very good health-wise lately. He posted some videos of himself training, as you guys probably know, he is coaching Andrew Jacked. Also, Flex was a guest at The Manage podcast with Dennis James, on Muscle & Fitness YouTube channel. Also, guys, if you haven't seen this podcast, I definitely encourage you to go watch it. It's a really good podcast. Also, with Milo Sharch, as you can see, and Chris Cormier, it was a great podcast, but if you have seen it, then you probably noticed that, like, 80% of this podcast was Flex Wheeler talking. They could not stop him, they could not interrupt him. He was talking non-stop, he was on a roll, and these guys were laughing, they were happy that he was so, I would say, full of life, you know, considering Gary everything that happened to this guy, what he has been through, he is doing really good, and in this podcast he was so positive, he was uh, laughing, it was, it was a good podcast, and I thought Flex was doing really good, and he probably was doing good at the time, but then something unfortunate happened. This is what he posted two days ago, as you can see, unfortunately, he's back in the hospital. So he says, 11 days and counting since I've been hospitalized due to some less desirable topics. So what exactly is the reason why he's hospitalized? We don't know yet, he didn't reveal anything really. He just says that it is something less desirable. Then he goes on, you know, to talk about philosophy of life. Uh, he, he's grateful he has a phone and that he can uh, talk to his uh, clients and, uh, you know, do the work when he's in a hospital. And, um, you know, he still stays pretty optimistic based on this caption here. He wants to communicate with his fans and so on. And there is a bunch of people commenting down below. He was responding to many of those comments. He was liking the comments. He was actually interacting with his, with his friends and with his fans. And then he posted this. Time to say goodbye to the dreamer. What does this actually mean? It seems like nobody has any idea. A lot of people are worried, but it seems like it's not very good. We don't know why he was hospitalized, but if he says something like this, time to say goodbye. And he posts this, 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 uh, this video and this caption, and he basically doesn't respond to anyone. Maybe he posted this before he underwent a high-risk surgery. I have no idea. I probably shouldn't speculate. But, you know, saying something like this, time to say goodbye. When I saw this, I was like, what happened? Did somebody else use his uh, profile to post this because Flex passed away? Or something like that? Or, he's, uh, or he has some terminal illness? Uh, honestly, that's what, what came to my mind first. And I really hope that's not the case. So let's hope Flex is gonna be okay, let's hope that whatever the situation is about is gonna get solved, and as soon as I get any more information about what was this all about, I will post it on my channel. Alright, let's move on to a more positive topic, it is Roman Fritz with his most recent physique update in which he is shredded, basically, peeled. And the thing is, the funny thing about this is, it took him three weeks to get this conditioned. And I'm not even exaggerating, I mean literally three weeks from his off-season to this contest shape, three freaking weeks. This is the post that he made uh, four weeks ago and he said that he was one week into the diet and 11 weeks out of his show that he plans on doing. And he was already very, very lean. It, it's crazy how lean this guy stays in the offseason, especially considering how much this guy has to eat, how much food he has to consume in the offseason to barely even grow. I'm gonna show you in a second what he's doing, but I saw this post and I saw that he was absolutely shredded for the offseason for one week of diet and 11 weeks until the show. And I was like, why? 
I asked him why diet for 12 weeks when you can be shredded in 4 weeks. His answer was basically that he wants to do that slowly. As you can see he says slow and steady wins the race, holding contest shape is no problem for me. And then I wanted to make sure to clarify, I asked him what you are saying is you will keep more muscle, look better if you diet down very slowly and he said yes. So his plan was to get conditioned over the course of 12 weeks. But he lost around 30 pounds, I believe. I think he was 290, now he's around 260. And it happened over the course of only 3 weeks, actually, not even 4 weeks. And this is what he looks like right now. He's pretty much peeled. And he also talked about there is that layer in his lower back that he always dieted down longer than he needed to because he thought it was fat, but it's really just the water. He's holding water in that area. So he's done. Like, that's, that's it. He's conditioned enough. He doesn't need to diet anymore. And the thing is, it's crazy that, that this guy is actually one of the smaller IFBB Open pros. And he's a little bit taller than the other guys. That's why he weighs as much as he does. As you can see right here, standing next to Ian Valier, Mohamed Shaban, uh, Andrea Muzi also. And you will notice that he's not exactly as big as the other guys. Not as round. He needs more tissue. Especially compared to... Uh, Ian Valier, as you can see, so he was much, much bigger, but Roman comes in, in crazy condition, and that's why he was third here, even though Mohamed Shaban was bigger, again, Roman was not exactly flexing in this, in this, in this photo, so you can't really see how much are these guys bigger, but he was, you know, on a smaller side, for sure, he has a little bit big frame, and he needs to fill it up, did he do that in these past couple of years during his off-season? I'm not really sure, I have to see him on stage, but he doesn't seem like a freak like Ian Valier, for example, in the offseason. I think he still looks a little bit on the smaller side, he still needs more muscle, and what is insane, again, is how much he actually has to eat, and still he doesn't really grow that much, and he stays super lean in the offseason. Let me show you how much he eats, it, it's insane. So what were, what were your pre, intro and post-workout shakes, carb-wise, what were you taking in? 250 grams of liquid carbs all together no no be before 50 during and then a hundred 250 after just so people understand the full scope of it you're eating a pre-workout meal three hours before what is that meal usually on average just chicken and rice something how much rice bad. like how much rice like 300 grams probably that point at in 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 carbs, 150. So what is the rest of the day look like? Are you still eating like a mass amount of carbs in all your other meals? Like it's still around 150 grams, like your pre-workout meal, or is it all reduced? No, it's, um, it's four solid meals, four solid meals, and then all these, all these shakes. Yeah. So where's the third, where's the third shake later in the day? No, it's the second workout. So it's the same process. Oh, twice oh, oh you're doing oh, two this workouts. Is twice a day? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you heard that. Ridiculous, ridiculous. So four solid meals. Every one of those meals is 150 grams of carbs. So that's 600 grams of carbs. And also 600 grams of carbs around the workouts, during and before and after. As you heard, 250 before, 250 after, and 50 during. And that's 600. He repeats the same process twice. That's 1,200 grams of carbs, you know, sugars around the workout. And also another and also another 600 grams of complex carbs from solid meals throughout the day. In total, that's 1,800 grams of carbs. I, I hope my math is wrong, but I don't think it is. I think I calculated this properly. So this is probably the craziest protocol that I ever heard. The craziest amount of carbs and food. He also eats a lot of protein as well. He said that during his rest days, he doesn't really do this. He takes some time off, but like five days a week or six days a week, he does this insane protocol. And you know what? He gets to be an open bodybuilder. If he wasn't doing this, he would be, you know, a classic bodybuilder. Unfortunately, he's still not really growing at the rate some of the, some of the other guys are growing at, you know, like, for example, Ian Balier, who we just saw standing next to Roman. And I don't think uh, Roman is on that level yet, even though Ian is eating much more than Roman. Ian is still eating a lot, but what Roman is doing is absolutely ridiculous. Insane. I pushed my carbs a couple of times up to 800 grams and it was horrible, it felt horrible. Of course, I'm not as big as Roman, but you know, 1800 grams 
you know, his, his life is living hell, literally. And this guy is so motivated, he loves bodybuilding so much that he's willing to go through this hell just in order to compete in open bodybuilding. And I hope he's going to look good, I hope he's going to win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. He plans on doing all the European shows, I think there are like 5-6 European shows left, and maybe 3 more American shows. So he has around 10 more, 9-10 more shows to do. And I hope he's going to get that Mr. Olympia qualification because if anybody deserves it, if anybody worked hard for it, that's Roman freaking Fritz. Next up, we have Hadi Chopin with a physique update, and this guy is not doing anything like Roman, he just puts a lot of Sintol everywhere, and that's it. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm, of course I'm joking, all the Hadi fans are disliking the video now and writing negative comments. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, it was a joke, I had to do it, but uh, really, Hadi looks amazing right now. Look at, the, look at the separation in his chest, and also like the conditioning, he is really lean at this point. More than 20 weeks is left before the Mr. Olympia, and he stays really shredded and really big and full so as you can see he's definitely much much bigger than somebody like roman fritz and i have no idea what kind of protocols Hari is doing i mean all jokes aside it's not all sindol it's not all oil he has a lot of it in his delts as you can see and probably his arms but you can't do that with your chest look at his chest it's absolutely ridiculous also his quads are like really hard really separated so he has a lot of real muscle as well and this year i don't i don't think i can see him winning the Mr. Olympia, but, you know, staying in that top three would be an insane result this year. With all these crazy looking competitors, this year's Mr. Olympia is going to be really, really competitive, and just staying in top three, top five, even, staying in top five would be ridiculous. Just simply not allowing Nick Walker to surpass him, not allowing Hunter Labrada to beat him, not allowing William Bonek to come back and beat him again, or Samson Dauda, or so many of these other great guys, they are all really pushing it at this point, because Mr. Olympia this year is going to be super, super competitive, and again, just staying in that top 5 for Hari Chopin would be a great result, let alone staying in top 3. Could he win the Mr. Olympia? I don't really think he has it, I think he's a little bit too short to be a Mr. Olympia. Mr. Olympia has kind of always been a big man show, and also the Sintel and like the oil in his delts, maybe it's not Sintel, maybe it's just gear, but whatever it is, the judges are knocking him down for it, maybe he would have won the Mr. Olympia last year if there wasn't for that, who knows, but maybe if he wasn't doing it, maybe he would look much smaller and much worse, and he wouldn't even place that high. Anyways, this is what he looks like right now, whatever you guys have on your mind, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.